recent sewing obsession and trying to create illustrations with different mediums, I couldn't help but notice this bag of old t-shirts that to be honest, I've been wanting to donate for a long time. And I thought, you know, some of these t-shirts I kind of have good memories with and I kind of hate to get rid of them. I know you can make quilts by taking chunks of t-shirts and putting them together and having like this memory quilt. That's really cute. And I also don't have that many t-shirts. So what I was actually thinking, instead of making a quilt, I would turn my old t-shirts into art. By taking an embroidery hoop and taking a piece of the material, I can actually turn this into something I can hang on my wall, but also add stuff to it, like maybe a character, or I was actually thinking about putting phrases or words or something on it that, I don't know, made me laugh or, you know, cheered me up. I'm always trying to experiment with the way I illustrate and create, and I thought this would be really fun just to see how it turns out. That's enough rambling, right? Let's brainstorm some ideas and come up with some fun ways to use these old t-shirts and create some fun art. The one with scooters, I was already thinking about putting some silly words or phrases to, I don't know, display that could either cheer me up or make me laugh. <laughs> you know, at the very least, try. That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> to be honest, the reason why I even have that scooter shirt is because my sister gave it to me because I used to have a scooter and then I got hit by a car and almost died. So it might be kind of funny to have a phrase that says, not dead yet. <laughs> For the fries, I was actually thinking it would be fun to manipulate one of the fry images that is on the pattern so that I could do some embroidery and then maybe one of them has, I don't know, a plant growing out of it or something. Heck, maybe I should just put a felt creature in the middle who is like absolutely just drooling over the fact that they are surrounded by fries. For the eyeballs one, I was actually thinking about doing another one with words. When creating these pieces, I'm actually thinking about where these would be hung up in, you know, somewhere I live. So what if, what if this one was actually hung up in the bathroom? So if I were to hang this up in the bathroom, it would actually be kind of funny so that it's across the wall from when you are going, you know, you're using a toilet. So you sit down and you look up and you see this hanging on the wall and maybe it says something like, I don't know, it could be something simple like, I see you. And you're just like, wow, that definitely makes me feel uncomfortable because I'm trying to sit here and take a poo. And <laughs> there's this thing across from me that says, I see you. Oh, actually, I just got a really good idea. Okay, imagine a bathroom where you sit on the toilet and you see this across from you, but I actually sew this on backwards so that when you look in the mirror when you're washing your hands, let's see if I can write this backwards. So it'll be backwards when you look at it, but when you look in the mirror and you wash your hands, you look up, it'll say, I see you in the mirror and it'll be kind of creepy. You'll turn around and it's, it's backwards, but you look in the mirror. Ooh, I actually really like that idea. I think that's actually kind of fun. Okay. Let's get to sewing. But before we jump into it, I do want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. That's right, the online learning community with thousands of classes taught by creatives just like you guys. I'm talking illustration, painting, even baking, sewing. That's what I'm going to be doing today. If you want to learn something new, Skillshare is the place to go. So before I jumped into this project, I went to Skillshare to learn a thing or two about embroidery. So I found this class by Fleur who talked about adding texture, using color, and a few techniques that I had never really thought about when it came to stitching. So I watched her class on creating these adorable embroidered creatures and I was ready to get into it. With a premium membership at less than $10 a month, you can get unlimited access to all of their classes and get to learning today. And the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Okay, let's turn these old t-shirts into something a little bit more creative. Starting off with a t-shirt that I was having the most struggle with was sketching up ideas that I wanted to create using this t-shirt pattern. To be honest, the most useful tip that I got from this embroidery class on Skillshare was actually about the pen. Now I knew these friction pens were deactivated, I guess, by either using a heat gun or a hair dryer, but I never thought about using them with my sewing. You simply use a friction pin on your sewing and then apply heat. 
white and it's gone. It's completely gone. You can draw your pattern on your material, your t-shirt, your felt, whatever you're using. Apply some heat and your pen just disappears. I mean, how this would have been life-changing when I made cosplays in high school. I mean, Wow. You never know what you're going to learn through these classes. You might be watching a class about embroidery and learned how to use a pen. Anyways, going back to our creation, when it came to this t-shirt, I, like I said, I struggled the most with coming up with an idea of what I wanted to even do with it. Obviously, I wanted to incorporate or sort of play off the french fries in some way, but I really wasn't sure how. Then I thought about a Casey Golden staple, that's right, we're going to be adding ants to this illustration because ants and food go hand in hand but I kind of wanted to add a cute or silly phrase to it so that when I hung this up it you know had a little punch to it. I also wanted to try my hand at a little bit more of a, I guess, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would really call this a hand embroidered font, but I did want it to look a little bit more handwritten, a little bit more sloppy, just a little bit more handmade than the other ones. So I stitched a silly phrase on there. I stitched how many ants does it take to eat a large size of fries? And the thing that actually took the longest on this piece was embroidering. I, I don't even know, can you call this embroidery I basically just did a lot of fringe knots and then add little stitching to create our little ants. I actually really like the look of these ants. They're kind of sloppy but they're just so handmade. They're really cute and silly. They're simple. They're all really different. None of them are perfect. They just resemble an ant enough to get by and I think they're just really cute. So I used the pen trick. I created a flow across this piece, put our ants on the line and then then heat gunned the line away. And there you go, there is our first recycled shirt piece of art. our second piece, this was actually the piece I was most excited about because I just felt like the idea was a little bit more clever and of course it had that aspect of interactivity to it. Is that even a word? Interactivity? The fact that you have to look in a mirror to, I guess, look at this piece of art, if you can even call it that, and really experience it the way it's supposed to be viewed. I just find that really fun. It's interactive, it's different than how I normally work, and I'm actually really excited to see this up in a future bathroom of mine. Right now I don't have, my bathrooms are very small. So sadly this is going to be a piece that I will have to put up in a bathroom in the future. But I just think it would be really silly to have guests over and they go to the bathroom. You know, a little potty humor. They go to the bathroom, wash their hands, and when they look in the mirror, they are met with this message that, you know, just kind of makes you think, did anybody see me take a poo? So this one's pretty simple. As you saw in the sketch, at first I was going to embroider maybe some blood dripping out of the eyeball. But once I put the words on this piece, I honestly thought it looked the best plain. I didn't want it to be too distracting. I really wanted the message to be the main part, the backwards words, which I had to say is a little sad. I was hoping there would be more backwards letters that made it more apparent that it was backwards. T's, H's, W's, A's, those are all, well, they look the same both ways. So you look at this and it kind of just looks like a jumbled mess of words. The only letter that really looks backwards is the S and the E. So it's not super apparent at first sight, but I think if you don't really pay attention to it, but you do see it in a mirror, I think it will be really obvious. So even though it's simple, I think this one is just a fun little, I guess, party trick. And you know, it's playful. I like this one. For our third and largest piece, this shirt was the one that had the most, I guess, meaning to it to me. Like I mentioned, this shirt was given to me by my sister and it's scooter related and I really do miss my scooter. And again, kind of related to me getting hit by a car. The message is also related to that incident and I just felt like this one had a lot I guess more of a backstory than the other two pieces. The other two pieces were just meant for fun. This one, this one had some history. 
So going into this piece, I was really looking back at the others and I wanted to make sure that the shirt pattern, I guess, stood out more. I felt like with the eye shirt, you kind of, even though the words didn't cover up most of it, I just kind of felt like I didn't include the eye pattern of the shirt too, too much. So with the scooter shirt, I thought it would be really interesting if I cut out the words out of these little bubbles instead of, I guess, covering up the t-shirt with a speech bubble and then plain felt colors for the words. Though, to be honest, I kind of feel like because the scooters are white and the speech bubble is white, it kind of makes it a little hard to read because the words are, I guess, patterned and a little bit busy. So it's not as easy to read as I would like, and to be honest, I think it would have looked better had I just put a felt color for the words. But I'm glad I did decide to try something new, and I've never done something like this before, so it was definitely an experiment. It was also very tedious and scary to cut out all of those words out of the felt. I just felt like I was going to make one wrong cut and completely destroy all of the words, but thankfully it turned out pretty good. There are a few things here and there that I don't consider perfect, but I think they turned out pretty good. Just like with the felt illustrations in my previous video, I was playing around with maybe transparency and pieces of felt overlapping, and I played around with the white speech bubbles overlapping to create a pink color. That's very cute. I do like that. But again, I just kind of feel like if I also made the words that pink sort of salmon shade, it would kind of tie together a little bit better. We're learning. For the final details of this piece, I was trying to use some techniques I learned from the Skillshare class by adding some texture, just a little bit of interesting shading that maybe represented the way I shade or would line with a pen. I think it's really interesting to translate the way you illustrate into other mediums like felt and sewing. So I used these lines and made them broken and tried to create this really interesting and intense shading on these words because again, the message behind this one is a little intense. I'm not sure if I like it, but it definitely is an interesting texture that I want to play around with in the future. So maybe something I can experiment with again later. And that's it. That is our third message. Not dead yet. Kind of, you know, a little morbid, but a little fun to hang up around the house. And that is all three of our recycled old t-shirts to art pieces. Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you want to get a free premium membership, click that link in the description. And thank you so much for watching this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.